I see you doing something different. Mr. Maxwell, watch what's going on. When I pour the icy cold blue water into the hot water, did you see it going down like that? It circulates. It does. That's all because of convection currents. Now, if I told you that this same process occurs under the crust, would you believe it? Well, I don't see it. Well, you're right, and that's why it's, a lot of it is all theory. And today we're going to talk about the theory of plate tectonics. Now, the idea of plate tectonics, I'm going to show you a map of the world in a second. But the idea of plate tectonics, again, the theory of plate tectonics, and that's important. Because it's a theory because no one can actually physically go down beneath the Earth's surface and watch and, um, and observe these things happening. Okay, so it is still theoretical, but scientists are pretty sure this is what happens. Okay, so theory of plate tectonics. Okay, it's with the lithosphere, which is our crust and the top part of the mantle. Okay, it's solid rock. It's broke in, broken into separate sections called plates. Okay, think about a cracked hard-boiled egg. And these plates are in constant, slow motion, driven by convection currents in the mantle. So as those, um, the rock material in the mantle is moving upward, because it's heated from the core, and it comes into contact with the lithosphere, it's going to move those plates. And then the, uh, the mantle, the rock within the mantle will actually come back down, because it's cooler, because it's away from the core, it's more dense. As it sinks, it's going to warm up again and just keeps that natural movement. So if any of you have ever seen a lava lamp, it works the same principle. The uh, oil inside the lava lamp gets heated, becomes less dense, and rises when it hits the top, cools down, and comes back down again. So the plate boundaries are the edges of the plates where two or more of these plates meet. <coughs> and, and we're going to show you the map and how we have different plates moving in different directions. So as you can see here on this map, we have these arrows signifying the different direction. We have these lines here. Those are plate boundaries. And you can obviously see throughout the world these different plate boundaries. Now the way that scientists have come up with this idea of this map is based on certain things or certain features that occur at these locations. And they theorize that this is where the plate boundaries actually are. Now, there's three main types of plate boundaries. Okay? It has to do with their movement. Okay? And that is, um, you have divergent plate boundaries when plates move apart. Okay? So you have the, the plate boundaries both of the plates are moving apart from each other. And the result in a mid-ocean ridge, if it's in the ocean, or if it's on land, it creates a rift valley. Actually, the most famous rift valley is actually in Africa, the eastern part of Africa, in Ethiopia specifically. Okay, if you ever watched River Monsters on Hook, good program, um, he fishes there quite often because he gets uh, monstrous fishes that grow in that region. And just to show you what it looks like on our map, okay, we have right here, that would be a divergent plate boundary. Okay, in this location as well, this is our Atlantic Ocean. And there's a, the, a mid-ocean ridge is formed all through these boundaries. And as you can see... So that's where it's separating like taffy. You're pulling the taffy and it's getting pulled. And there's another one right here too, right? <clears throat> right there, anywhere it's going apart. This is important because that's called Iceland. Iceland's an, actually a volcanic island. Um, that's formed at that mid-ocean ridge. The other type, well, sorry, I should say another type, is a convergent plate boundary. When things converge, they come together. Now, we actually have three different types of convergent plate boundaries, and it depends on the type of crust that there is. If it's continental crust colliding, it forms mountains. Okay? Himalayan mountains are formed in this manner. If it's Two oceanic crusts coming together. They form trenches, like the Mariana's Trench. What happens in that case? The older rock material, the older oceanic crust, is more dense and will go underneath the other younger oceanic crust. Then we have a case where we have oceanic crust 
coming into contact with continental crust. And this creates something called a subduction zone. And this, and this often happens in the ocean, right on the shoreline, where the oceanic crust being more dense will go beneath the continental crust. And then it creates volcanoes. So a lot of volcanic activity occurs at convergent plate boundaries. The most um, famous for us is Mount St. Helens. Okay, and just to show you on the map where um, some places where convergent plate boundaries are, okay, actually right here, because it's one to Fuca plate, we actually get a convergent plate boundary. Throughout the Pacific Ocean, you see a ring of all these different convergent plate so boundaries. So this ring of hot volcanic lava coming out, doesn't it have another name called the Ring of Fire? And you can see, just kind of draw it out for you, how you get this ring forming. Now, here, you don't really have a lot of volcanic activity, but you get a lot of earthquakes in California, and that's because of the third type of plate boundary, which is a transform boundary. And what happens there is that the plates actually slide past each other okay, in opposite directions. Okay, so you get a rubbing motion and you get a lot of earthquake activity there. You also can get earthquake activity at the other plate boundaries as well. But in transform boundaries, you saw um, the only real um, thing that happens is earthquakes. But you get very powerful earthquakes. So transform boundary, the plates slip past each other. A convergent boundary, the plates pushing against each other, squish each other, lifting uh, mountains up high. The divergent boundary plates are pulling apart from each other. Very destructive and yet can be very constructive also. The Hawaiian Islands are uh, growing in size even as we speak because of the construction of the volcanoes. Now, if you look at this picture, this shows you just how some of these plates can go underneath others. Where in this case, we have kind of the crust moving in this direction, and oceanic crust colliding. The oceanic crust will go beneath, you get that subduction zone here, and then the volcano. Because you have a lot of molten rock as that rock that comes down is melting, and it goes through the Earth's surface. Okay, so that's how you get those subduction zones. The trenches form when you have the oceanic crust colliding. Okay, so those are the different types of plate boundaries that you need to know.